You know, back in the 1960s and into the 70s, critics were complaining that some of John Wayne's movies were too long. For me, this is one of his best movies of those two decades, and it was too short, mainly because his co-star could have been the lead in the same movie with another key actor, let's say Robert Mitchum or Glenn Ford. But you put Kirk Douglas and John Wayne together, boys, what a what a entertaining western this was. Now, The War Wagon is a 1967 American Western ice film directed by Burt Kennedy and starring Wayne and Douglas. <coughs> now, released by Universal, it's produced by Marvin Schwartz and adapted by Claire Huffaker from his own novel. It's a great supporting cast. includes Howard Keel, Robert Walker Jr., Keenan Wynn, Bruce Cabot, Joanna Barnes, Valora Noland, Bruce Dern, and Gene Evans. The film received generally positive reviews and uh, did a ton of money to the box office. Some people say $10 million. I think he made a little bit more. Now, filming took place in the Sierra de Organos National Park in the town of Sombrerete, Mexico. Now, cinematographer by William Cloutier, edited by Harry W. Jerstad and Jim Clark, music by the great Dimitri Tonkum, production companies were Balta, ba, Batjack Productions, Wayne's Company, and Marvin Schwartz Productions, 101 minutes, and again, <coughs> they say 9.5 million in the box, that was a thing that was a little bit more. Now, in this one, former rancher Todd Jackson returns his hometown to settle a score with corrupt businessman Frank Pierce. Three years earlier, Pierce had Jackson wrongfully imprisoned and appropriated his land, including his house and some recently discovered gold deposit. Jack plans to steal an upcoming $500,000 shipment of gold dust from Pierce's war wagon, an armored stagecoach surrounded by mounted guards. Wes Fletcher, an elderly wagon driver employed by Pierce to transport dry goods, becomes Jackson's informant. The third member Jackson recruits for the team is Lomax, a gunslinger and safecracker who earlier shot Jackson as part of Pierce's plot. The fourth team member is Levi Walking Bear, a Creole translator whom Jackson and Lomax rescue from a gang of Mexican bandits. Jackson then sends Lomax to pick up the final member, Billy Hyatt, a teenage drunkard and explosive expert. Yeah, that's what you want. Uh, <laughs> a teenager with explosive that gets, gets drunk. Good plot point. When a team first meets to discuss their plan, Fletcher brings his teenage wife Kate along and flies into a jealous rage when Hyatt gives her some coffee. Now Jackson and Levi negotiate with the Kiowas because Pierce is deliberately starving the tribe off of their land. They agree to help. Meanwhile, Lomax rides into town and is approached in a saloon by Pierce, who offers him $12,000 to kill Jackson. An inebriated Hyatt enters and comes dangerously close to revealing the plan. Little Lomax knocks him unconscious and hands him over to the sheriff for the night, then accepts Pierce's offer but asks for time to do the job. Now in the morning, Jackson sends Hyatt to Fletcher's farm. Hyatt finds Kate alone and she reveals that her impoverished parents have traded her to Fletcher. Fletcher returns and threatens Hyatt with a knife, but Jackson arrives in time to defuse the situation. Hyatt says he wants to use nitroglycerin for his part of the ice, so he, Jackson, and Lomax sneak onto Jackson's old ranch to steal some from Pierce. Jackson keeps Pierce distracted by pretending to collect some of his old things, while Lomax and Hyatt crack a safe and take the explosives. The next day, Hyatt rigs a bridge into with bottles of nitro, Levi blocks the war wagon's route with a felled tree, and Lomax and Jackson set up a booby trap in a narrow gorge, and Pierce and his guards set out with the gold in a war wagon. Kyo or warriors create a distraction that briefly draws off the wagon's guards, causing them to be stranded on the other side of the canyon when the bridge explodes behind the wagon. Some more Kiowa warriors attack the wagon to get the gold for themselves, but a newly installed Gatling gun forces them to retreat. Now the fallen tree diverts the wagon into the gorge, and Jackson and Lomax spring their trap, killing the drivers. Pierce shoots the last of the two of his two men when he tried to desert them, but the uh, second shoots back as he dies, uh, killing, uh, killing Pierce. Now, the wagon crashes through a gulch, and Jackson's team hides the gold dust and some barrels of flour on Fletcher's cart. The Kiowa, uh, Kiowa warriors arrive to take the gold, and Fletcher is killed when he attempts to stop them. Now, Hyatt manages to use the last bottle of nitro to kill the chief and scare the remaining warriors away. The explosion spooks the cart horses. As they flee, the flower barrels fall off the cart to break open next to a group of evacuating Kiowa women and children. 
Unaware that there, there is gold mixed in, they gather up the flour to feed themselves. Now Jackson reaches the car first. In the hidden compartment, he finds the $100,000 worth of gold that Fletcher intended to steal from his partners. Thinking they have lost everything, Levi returns to Kiowa's, and Lomax angrily takes uh, uh, Jackson's horse as payment. When Hyatt arrives with Kate, Jackson gives them a small amount of dust, hiding the rest. When a furious Lomax confronts him, uh, Jackson smugly tells Lomax that he has to be kept alive until the Gratilla group meets in six months as planned to divide up the loot. Now, uh, Joanna Barnes in a very early performance plays Lola. Uh, uh, Sheb Woolley in a, in a guest performance uh, as well plays Snyder. Dan Collier and of course Hal Needham is in there as well. Now the film was based on the 57 novel Bad Men by Claire Huffaker. Uh, in September of 62, he announced he would adapt it into a script at the producer's studio for his own Lucifer Productions. They were also going to make Guns of Rio Conchos the day before tomorrow and a ship on Highway 7, but the project eventually went to Universal. Huffaker said that while he had written the novel in 10 days, he spent three months writing the screenplay. Because Bad Men was 11 book that Huffaker had sold to a film studio, Trident Publishing put him under contract to write a book a year for five years. In June 66, John Wayne announced he had signed a two-bitcher deal with Universal, the movies being The War Wagon and the controversial The Green Berets. This film would be a co-production between Wayne's company, Batjack, and producer Marvin Schwartz. Now, the following month, it was announced that Douglas would play the co-starring role in a film with Kurt Kennedy, with Burt Kennedy uh, as director. The extensive second unit stunt work for the film was supervised by Cliff Lyons. Now, filming took place in Wayne's popular location, Durango, Mexico, and at Chur- Chura Busco Studios in Mexico City, starting on September 1966, and lasted three months. About the shoot, Wayne said, we're gaining a day every week. This combined Hollywood and Mexico crew is great. If we can come home a week under schedule, we all be home with our families for turkey dinner. Africa was present on the site for the first and last three weeks of production, and while there, made a number of uh, uh, changes to the script. Kennedy said he let Wayne direct himself in the film. Now, the film debuted in first place at the domestic box office. Uh, according to reports, it grossed 9.563 million American in total, making it a success. One account called it a smash success. Now, The War Wagon was generally uh, met with positive reviews from critics and and, uh, uh, viewers alike and holds a 90% fresh score of Rotten Tomatoes based on 10 reviews. In a turn of fate, Roger Ebert gave the film 3 out of 4 stars, calling that a comparative rarity, a Western film with quite good humor. It also pointed the departure for John Wayne, who plays a bad guy for just about the first time in his career. And of course, the infamous comic book that you can't find anymore, Dell movie classic, The Ward Wagon, came out in September 67. Now, I've seen the comic book, but I've never seen it, only the cover, not the, uh, not the, the, the whole amount, as we say. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen this movie, but everybody tells me it's a very, very solid film for uh, Douglas and uh, John Wayne and the rest of the, the people. But you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, 1967 wasn't a time for the modern Western. This was seven years before Blazing Saddles. But this is probably one of the last <coughs> big box office Western. And, of course, John Wayne led it. So, anyway, it's pretty good. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here, our Jane Wa- John Wayne podcast, uh, happy to be Kirk Douglas in this one. Let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share, or super chat. And don't forget, requests are always appreciated and always highly considered. Thanks for listening. Bye.